Dit programma wordt mede mogelijk gemaakt door het International Film Festival Rotterdam. Welkom bij Big Talk. Tien dagen lang worden tijdens het International Film Festival Rotterdam de meest bijzondere films vertoond. En iedere avond in het Oude Luxor interviewt Hans Maarten van der Brink een belangrijke gast van het festival. Vanavond is dat niemand minder dan Bernardo Bertolucci over zijn film Io e te. Dank u wel, dames en heren. Thank you very much, Mr. Bertolucci. Thank you. It's an honor. And uh, we had to wait a long time for you to have a film in the festival. You've been here in 68, I think, uh, and sometimes as a guest. Before we start, um, uh, I, th I think I have the same experience as, uh, as many people in the audience, uh, that, you've, uh, that I, we meet for the first time, but you have been with me, with us, for decades. Um, your films um, mark changes in the cultural, in the political climate. If it was for Il Conformista, which I had to catch up on because of my age, for Novecento at the time when Gerard Depardieu was still willing to pay his taxes, um, the Last Tango in Paris and on a completely different level, and, and then The Last Emperor, The Sheltering Sky. Um, and now there has been a pause for nine years. My first question would of course be, Why did you stop at a certain moment, and why did you start again now? Um, I think that this is a kind of uh, uh, God's punishment because I've done too many dolly movements in my movies, so now <laughs> I'm becoming a human dolly, and uh, <laughs> and uh, so. And uh, people have to stand up for you. And, yeah. <laughs> So it was the problems with your back that made you basically uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, um, it's nine years of um, the story of my back. I could do uh, my back story. Okay, the back story <laughs> is not behind me, but it's uh, the story of somebody, me, that for a discal hernia was operated not very well. And... Um, I remember when I did the Dreamers, um, I was very much in pain. Then uh, um, there was uh, another moment in uh, 2004 uh, when I had another pro back problem and a second operation. And uh, then in 2008, a third operation. So it's a bit boring, but uh, It was a, to say, it's be, very, be very careful before writing some scalpel to touch your back. Mm -hmm. And uh, when four years ago I had to go on this chair, um, I thought, uh, okay, it's the end of, uh, um, of me as a director, as a film director. I will have a lot of time to read all the books I haven't read, and, and they gave up in a way. No, I want to, to tell if somebody is in my condition, um, I think the, it's very important at a certain moment you start to accept that condition. 
And, so and then the you, have moment room, you have room again for... The, the moment I accepted the bloody wheelchair, mm -hmm. uh, I started to think, but it's okay. Uh, on one hand, it will be a miracle, because uh, I did that. On the other hand, it's the easiest thing for me to shoot a movie. So, uh, two years ago, I had this... Uh, Nicola Maniti um, gave me his new book, Io e te, me and you. And uh, I thought, that's perfect for me. It happens in more or less one principal set. And uh, uh, so I can make it. It's you, you must have been reading various books. But what, what made this one so special? Was it the, the character, the main character? Was it the situation as you... Was that, um, in a way, with my operations, I created a condition mm -hmm. quite similar to the one of the boy, you will see, of the movie. I mean, I, I closed myself at home for a period. So I could identify with the kid. With a 14-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> No, I and, said and yesterday in a press conference that mm, so when somebody tells me, oh, it's such a young movie, I, I like to say this is not a special talent, it's just a case of my arrested development <laughs> at the age of 14. And uh, so um, it was uh, great fun. I, I, Fantastic fun. Let, let me be almost as personal as you are now, and it's a risk for me. Um, the film you're about to see um, is, is basically about a, a, a young boy. We can, we, can also, we can already tell that. And I was very, very much touched by, by that boy. The, the frail body, a bit too long, a bit clumsy, um, the, 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 the face. The insecurity and at the same time this strange determination to do something, or rather, do, uh, don't do something and, and resist. Um, the sort of um, striving, yearning for contact, for love and being unable to make it. I felt very old and uh, at the same time sort of transplanted to that day and age. Mm -hmm. Was that the sort of feeling you tried to capture in the film? Was that the motivation? Um, I, I really didn't get exactly what you felt. I mean, the fact that... This, the, 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 sort of the sort of relation between how it is when your body is still growing, oh, mentally yeah. you're still oh, growing, yeah. Yeah. you're insecure, you want to make contact, you want, you want to be loved, but you're, you're not able to. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, it's the malaise of the adolescence that uh, we all know. I, I, I have seen... Uh, 14 years old um, kids, so friends of mine, insulting their parents like like furious and locking themselves in their rooms and uh, smoking pot. And I mean, 14 is very difficult uh, mm. and very violent. Can be very violent. And uh, the, the, the way it's a portrait of. Uh, um, of uh, you and me and uh, at 14, because we were all like that. And... Uh, you weren't like that. Mm, I was... Uh, yeah, I was writing poems, and uh, it's a way of lock your, It's a way of locking yourself, also, to write poems. And... Uh, mm. You did change a few things in, in the... Uh, comparing with the novella, I think. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the father is only present in, in dreams, I understand. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's Lorenzo's own decision um, not to go on the trip uh, instead of that he's excluded. I think it, it makes it even stronger, but what, what was the motivation to change that? Do you remember? The motivation is that uh, he wants to have a week without his parents. And, uh, and it's not the others who are pushing him away. The, the, the best occasion is to say that he's going uh, to a, a ski week. And, uh, is, is there a big difference for you working from a book, a novella, as in this case, 
and or developing uh, your own script? Uh, you know, in some way, at the end of the shooting, the novella is something very different. When I do film for my... Um, it's like it becomes mine, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it's because when you do <clears throat> a movie from a book, uh, the writers have to know that uh, the book will be completely uh, manipulated and become different. Unrecognizable. And, uh, back, back, oh, <laughs> no, but uh, there are big changes in all the movies I've done from my books, uh, like The Conformist, Spider Stratagem, um, Shatter and Sky. Um, you, if, I, if I make for a movie from a book, mm -hmm. I have to rewrite the book in a way, in the sense of uh, movie language. Uh, and what is the role of the original writer then? Do you like to consult him? Or? Because he did cooperate on the scenario. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, writers in general are very um, stiff about big changes. Yes, so why you, were yes, with you, them? Yes, no, 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 because I, want, because I wanted to change to have him and to convince him that mm -hmm. the changes were good. He was doing some grimaces, but <laughs> he accepted that. And now it's very pleased, I think. When it comes to filming, um, you, um, you are not particularly aiming for realism in, 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 in most of your films. And, um, but as soon as you have two people in a room, in a closed... Mm -hmm. Uh, space. Mm. Doesn't it be, does, don't you run the risk of it being more theater than cinema? Um, yeah, it's another challenge. And uh, I'd love to be able to make uh, um, a cinema that gives the same strength that uh, you have in theater when you can smell the sweat of the actors. So if that is theater, uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. But it's, it's a different way to, of directing, or not? You know, I, n I never accepted to... They offered me to do theater, to do a lot of uh, operas. Mm -hmm. Because in my first movies there was a lot of Verdi music, uh, and there were situations with operas, uh, like in La Luna. And uh, I never accepted I have a stage panic. What? <laughs> the French call Le Trac. And, uh, what is that, stage panic? Stage panic, the one uh, I had just 10 minutes before. Oh, OK, <laughs> yeah. So the but it's, idea, it's over now, I hope. The idea yeah, to, yeah, 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 no, yeah. Yeah. Now, they say that I, to take me to a stage, um, I need uh, at least uh, a lot of money. Then to take me away. I need a lot of money. I want to stay to remain. Yeah, yeah, because you when, once see, you're on, you, you love it. You will see. We stay and talk and talk and talk. No, 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 no. We, we, we're limited to a little over 20 minutes, mm. so I think we should get on. Um, <coughs> where are moments where you thought back to another very famous and, and uh, ground-changing movie um, that you made with two people in a room, an apartment? I mean, of course, The Last Tango in Paris. Mm. Were there similarities in the, in the, in the whole setup? There, there was already this looking for a, a closed uh, place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you do Last Time in Paris, which is also uh, in a, an apartment, and then I did Novecento, which is completely unplanned. Wide open spaces, and open yeah. Space yeah. And, and little by little, you know, you. You explore, you do your secret challenges. Can you do more improvisation in, in such a small space? Was there much improvisation by the actors in, in I, this film? I ask a lot of the actors to improvise, yeah. to be uh, surprised is very good, because I think that I love to be surprised when I see a movie. So and you put them if, off balance? If, say, if they are sometimes, yes. Yeah, it happened with the poor Maria Schneider. And uh, when uh, we had the scene with butter, mm -hmm. 
and we prepared it with Marlon, but I didn't tell Maria what was going on. And she was, uh, because they wanted her reaction as a girl, not as an actress. I didn't want her to act that. And she was very offended and humiliated, and I was very sad and when she died. I was really sad because I didn't, I never met her again. I couldn't mm. ask her to forgive me. It's a very I'm, I'm tragic story. But, and it, mm. of course, begs the question if you're still good friends with the two actors in this film. <laughs> yeah. Are you? Yeah. They, maybe the other thing is that I have no children to do movies with young actors, a way of feeling uh, a father. Feeling like a father. Are they really actors then? A 14 year old boy? It's not a professional they, actor, they, cannot be a professional actor. No, it is. No, but also the three kids in The Dreamers, they felt very much a kind of paternity. Um, you, you already mentioned music. Um, let's not um, uh, tell people <laughs> what the music is in this film, but did you select it yourself? There's one touch of genius near the end, which I thought, well... <laughs> um, um, the, the, the music on the earphone is chosen by the boy. I wanted him to be happy on what he was... Hearing. But it's, it's vintage for him. Mm, no, because uh, the cure is not vintage, and etc., etc. The last one, the last piece is, uh, is not in his earphone. The last piece is... Um, That's almost a commentary. We're not going to tell you the title. That's almost a commentary from the director or from God. <laughs> Isn't it? It's uh, something written in 69 and, uh, yeah. and uh, registered, um, done in 69 and tells the story of, of, of the film. Yeah. yeah. Right. It, it, it's, it's a fabulous commentary right near the end of the, of the film on, on everything that has been happening. Um, we are nearing already the end of our talk, but I want to go um, to the beginning of the film. Right when the first titles came on, I thought, and I'm asking the question because there are certainly people in the audience who will think the same thing, uh, Media said, wasn't that the company of... Um, Mr. Berlusconi, and weren't you always, among other things, also a political filmmaker? Um, yeah, but uh, I have nothing against Berlusconi as a film distributor. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he should stick to that. <laughs> but uh, I am very much, uh, I always did what I could against yeah. Berlusconi. Yeah. But um, is a, is a, you cannot not to go with, there are two big distribution in Italy. One is Mediaset and the other is Zero One, mm -hmm. which is um, the RAI, the national television distribution. And, and this is uh, Rock and Hard Place? Or huh? Rock and Hard Place, Kila Gareptis? No, it's, it's the, no, the fact is that uh, um, to be able to show the movies in, in Italy sometime, you need the big distributors, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I hope the, the Dutch distributors, a distributor I just met, um, uh, will have some luck with the other <laughs> And that they're such good capitalists that they will distribute it very well. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, of course the question comes from you being even, I think you even lost your voting rights for a while in Italy in the... Uh, you know, I tell young people who probably, be, probably haven't seen, hasn't seen um, Last Time in Paris. And so they will... Anyway, the story is that in Italy, the film was kind of um, persecuted by ju the justice. Uh, we had three trials, the first trial, the, 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 the denunciation, and then the movie was uh, uh, free, not... Uh, sentence, I mean, free. There was an appello, appeal, mm -hmm. and uh, we got uh, uh, Marlon Brando, the producer, and myself, um, 
uh, two months of prison with suspension. Can you imagine? You still have a bomb. Italy, yeah. Italy in uh, seventy-two, yeah. three. Then we were waiting when the, the third degree, uh, which was also con um, the film was condemned. Uh, so that I felt like a martyr a bit. It was also a good thing, and, but the film was of is, course is that a, bad. A, a nice feeling. But, <laughs> no, there'd be a martyr, yeah. But um, then the film disappeared for years. One day, years later, um, I didn't receive my electoral um, card, mm -hmm. and the election were there. So I went to the place where they, they do it, and they said, they stopped, said you, you forgot to send me uh, the electoral certificate. So an old man went, huge, big, black book, and he started to open it, and he said, oh, A, mm, B, <laughs> and, then, and then he read, Bertolucci Bernardo. Of course you can't, you can't vote, because you lost your civil rights. And that was really painful. And for five years, I couldn't vote. And, uh, so in the next election, are you going to vote? I'm not going to no, ask you for whom. No, it's of the 70s. Yeah, but will you, will you be voting? Um, you asking me for... No, yeah, not, not for whom you are going to vote, but will you be voting? Um, you know, uh, you touch a painful <laughs> subject. You're lucky that we're almost out of time. Because, <laughs> because uh, uh, I am in a kind of disamore with politics. Um, disamore, I like fell out of love. It's something that has been always quite urgent in different ways mm -hmm. for me. And, uh, uh, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure I will go. But you are sure, I hope, that you will make another film now that you've <laughs> yes, found your... So I will come back to Rotterdam. Yes. <laughs> well, on, on, on that note, um, I keep you to, to that promise. Thanks. And I wish you all a, a very good screening of you and me. Buona visione. De nachtfilm die u zo gaat zien is van de Egyptische regisseur Ibrahim El Batut, Havi uit 2010. Havi is een mozaïekfilm over het hedendaagse Egypte. Een film waarin iedereen op zoek lijkt te zijn naar iets of naar iemand. Eenzaamheid en wanhoop in het Egypte van nu. Dit programma werd mede mogelijk gemaakt door het International Film Festival Rotterdam.